talking about looking at the distribution of S when each of the terms in S is subject to a deductible, right? And I, I kind of like what we're gonna do over here uh, because it relates us to, to something that I explained earlier on when I was discussing uh, the impact of, of working per loss or per payment when you're uh, thinking about the, the technical price, about the risk premium on a, on a portfolio. Then I, I, I gave this derivation, I think that was during the last session we had on campus, campus sorry. There I explained that whether you work per loss or whether you work per payment, when you think about expressing the, the pure premium or the risk premium on a contract, we said that that's the same kind of thing, right? And we're gonna do something similar over here now when we are looking at the aggregate loss S, where each of the terms in our compound sum is now subject to a deductible, say. Yeah? So we wanna see what is the impact of looking at individual policy modifications, and we're gonna focus on the deductible. What is the impact of having individual deductibles on these aggregate payments? Yeah? How can you express uh, that? So I think this is something um, I think this is something nice to do on the on the iPad, and I'm slightly going to flip the order of my explanations because I think it makes uh, more sense to to do it slightly different than the way how I brought it on uh, on the sheets. Yeah. So what is the what is the idea? So the idea is that you're going to start from say X, which is a um, original loss or random uh, loss random variable. And on this X, we're going to impose a deductible. So we're going to put the deductible at the level of the, um, of the original losses. And that's something you really have to keep in mind because of course in exam questions, in, in exercises, I can put the deductible at the level of the total loss in a portfolio. So then the deductible, then S is subject to the deductible or I can put the deductible at the level of each of the individual losses that I'm considering. And that's the case over here. So I'm gonna impose a deductible and this deductible is gonna lead me to, yeah, say a YL a per loss random variable or a YP, a per payment random variable, yeah? And I'm gonna say that there is with probability V, so with a probability V, say the probability that X is larger than a certain D, the loss X leads to a payment. So that's a situation that I wanna consider. All right, and now I want to step from a single loss to the loss on a portfolio. So I'm going to step from the individual loss, the ground up loss, to the aggregate loss on the portfolio. So I'm going to focus here on S, and there are two ways now how I can look at this S. I can follow a per loss construction or I can follow a per payment construction, right? When I put the total loss S, when I, when I write it down, when I, when I put it together. And my whole message, so I'm gonna immediately announce the cliffhanger, but my whole message is gonna be that it doesn't matter whether I work per loss or per payment in this construction, right? It's just a matter of counting and adding together uh, the appropriate things. But I want to convince myself mathematically that both constructions, per payment or per loss, that they indeed lead to the same distribution. So I can express my um, per loss S, sorry, I can express my S with a per loss construction, right? And in that case, I'm going to look at Y1L, et cetera, et cetera, to YNL. So I work with the per loss random variables and I take a compound sum over all the losses, in this case an L, which have been reported on this 
portfolio. Yeah? So NL is the total number of losses reported across the portfolio. And I work with the per loss random variables with the y-ads, right? Uh, this per loss random variable, we know that it can take a value of zero in case the loss did not lead to a payment, uh, in case the loss x did not go above the deductible. And of course, I know that there is the con condition or the uh, assumption, let's say that s is zero if there are no losses on this portfolio. Yeah? So that would be one way to look at the aggregate loss uh, s. Now, the other way would be to say, instead of working with a per loss construction, you can look at a per payment construction, right? And then you're gonna write the S by only running over the payments in your portfolio. So you're gonna count the number of payments and you're gonna sum the per payment random variables again this S is zero if there were no payments on your portfolio. Yeah. So the idea is that we want to think about how to deal with the distribution of S. Yeah? And the way how I'm going to treat it is I'm going to start now with looking at the moment generating function of S. And I already learned in uh, the session from last week how to write down the moment generating function in case you're working with a compound sum, right? So I know for both constructions that I could say, if I think about the distribution of S, then I can do it via the moment generating function of S evaluated in Z. So that's the expected value of E to the power of Z times S. And then I know from last week, the moment generating function of a compound sum. If I work on the per loss construction, it's the probability generating function of the number of terms in your compound sum. So that's NL in the first construction, evaluated in the moment generating function of YL. But if I reason with the per payment construction, I'll get something similar, but then I need to work with these guys. So that's my per payment construction. So what I want to do now is, can I come up with a connection between the probability generating function of NL and NP and between the moment generating functions of YL and YP? And can I then convince myself that both lead to the same moment generating function for the aggregate loss S, right? So here is what I'm um, what I'm gonna do. So I want to build up the connections, and I want to build two types of connections. And the first one is about thinking about the moment generating function of y l. So that is the expected value of e to the power z times y l. And we know it's, a, it's an expected value, so I can use the tower rule. And I can say uh, this is the expected value of z times yl, given that yl is equal to 0 times the probability that yl is 0, plus it's the expected value, sorry, it's the expected value z times yl, given that yl is strictly larger than zero, multiplied with the probability that the yl is strictly larger than zero. So here I'm using the, um, the tower rule for the expected values. And I'm conditioning on this uh, indicator variable, if you want, that tells me is the yl equal to zero or is it strictly larger than zero and these are the only two possibilities which are possible now of course if the yl is equal to zero then i get to the power zero over here so this expected value is just one and i also know that i assumed beforehand that the probability that the loss is strictly positive is going to be v uh, it is, for example, the probability that the underlying X, loss x is overshooting the deductible. So I've got v and I've got 1 minus v. 
So if I put that together, what I have is one minus V plus V times. And now, of course, here I recognize the moment generating function of the per payment random variable. Because if I look at the uh, per payment random variable, this YP, that's equal to YL given that YL is strictly larger than zero. That's something we've already covered before. So here I've got my first connection that I need, right? My second connection is about the NL and the NP. Okay, so how can I write the NP, the number of payments? I can write it with a sum of Bernoulli random variables, which runs over the number of losses that I made. And where I say, well, each I is from a Bernoulli random variable with a probability of success equal to V, right? That's the probability that the loss is leading to a payment. And now, of course, if you look at this sum, it's again a compound sum, which I can write like this. So that means if I need to say something about the probability generating function of NP evaluated in Z, because this is a compound sum, the NP, I can use the connection which I had last week, uh, or in the chapter seven already, the probability generating function of NP is the probability generating function of NL, evaluated in the probability generating function of one of your Bernoulli random variables evaluated in Z. And for this last step, I know the probability generating function of a Bernoulli, that's easy because the Bernoulli can only take the outcomes zero or one. So I can immediately say it is one with a probability one minus V plus Z to the power one with probability V. So I have here a connection between the probability generating function of NP and the one from NL. And earlier on, I had this connection between the moment generating function of YL and the moment generating function of YP. And now I want to put this whole thing together to make sure that I can convince myself that if I look at the aggregate loss at the level of the portfolio, in case there is a deductible imposed on each of the individual losses, that then it doesn't matter if I work on the per loss construction or the per payment construction. And in order to do this, I will have to rely on the connections that I have over here. Yeah? So let's, and that's the very final step for today. So let's see how that goes. So if you start with the per loss construction, then we said, if you look at the moment generating function of S evaluated in Z, that's the expected value of e to, e to the power Z times S. That's the uh, probability generating function of the number of losses. And then you evaluate that in the moment generating function of YL. But now what we did on the previous sheet is we said, yeah, this moment generating function of YL, we just derived that that is equal to, what was it again? One minus V plus V times the moment generating function of YP, right? So that's just what I did on the previous sheet. But now if I look at this expression, what I recognize here is the connection between the probability generating function of NP and the probability generating function of NL. Because I said, now what we're gonna use is this second connection, which I had on the previous sheet, it's the connection like this. So if you look at this way of writing it, you recognize the same thing over here, but now it's not evaluated in Z, but it's evaluated in this moment generating function. So putting it all together, what I can say is that this is the probability generating function of NP, evaluated in the moment generating function of N of YP, evaluated in Z. So that convinces me that it doesn't matter if I work with the aggregate loss S, I can work with the per loss construction 
that's the that's the one that you have over here. That's my per loss construction. Or I can work with my per payment construction. But both are the same because both are expressions for the moment generating function of the aggregate loss S. Yeah. So this connects to what we did in the last session on campus, where I said if you look at a pure premium that you want to calculate at a technical premium, you can do it per payment or you can do it per loss, it doesn't matter. So here we see that again, if you look at a portfolio of losses, individual losses, each of the individual losses is subject to a deductible. Uh, so will only result in a payment with a certain probability. Well, if you then look at the aggregate loss in this portfolio, you can approach this distribution on a per loss or a per payment basis, but both lead to the same uh, expression because of the connections that we just developed. So on the sheets, I explained that as well, but I took a bit of a different order. I think uh, what we did over here uh, is more accessible, but um, I know it's pretty technical, but I really wanted to, to do this because this per loss or per payment can really lead to confusion. So I think it's insightful to see if you look at the aggregate loss on a portfolio subject to a deductible imposed on the individual losses that you can then work with the per loss or the per payment uh, and either approach will lead to the same uh, result.